Hey there, listeners. Welcome back to the Cramer East Secondary College podcast. Once again, per usual, you've got myself, Mr. L. We also have our other usual. Myself, Mr. Y. And we have two extremely special guests here today that we would like to introduce the all of you to. One of which you may have seen already around the school and another one who's completely brand new, but you definitely will be seeing a lot next year. So firstly, let's go with our usual. Uh, we have Miss... Miss Cook, so your college principal. Only been here a term and a bit now, um, but certainly getting to know the place a lot better and getting out into your classrooms as well. Mm -hmm. Out of lockdown, which is really mm. good. And we also have a new guest as well that you'll be seeing a lot in 2022. We have... Mrs Mingos, and I'm really looking forward to getting to meet everybody, the teachers and students of this school, and be part of the school community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mrs Mingos will be joining us as one of our assistant principals, so uh, you'll be seeing her around. And I believe the both of you, um, before you were principals or assistant principals, <laughs> Uh, you taught classes and what type of subjects did you teach again? Mm. So I've, done, I've taught a few things, Tony, but yes. the majority of my teaching was probably um, biology. Yes. Just like you, Mr. L. Yep. Uh, and also maths. So I taught a lot of further maths, math methods mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I taught a little bit of health PE. Mm. I taught drama one year because yep. sometimes you just fill in a gap. Yeah. Uh, but my, my main areas of teaching were biology and maths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Mr. And Nicholas? mine, I also teach the best subject ever, which is biology. And yep. I've taught some junior science and some middle year science as well. Created a whole bunch of different electives for um, the school that I'm at, which have a biology focus to try and get mm. kids intrigued in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to take on any weird, well, not weird, but subjects that you haven't actually trained for before? Did you have well, you know, any particular Well, I ones? have been trained in history, but I uh, hadn't taught it for about 20 years until wow. I had to go into the classroom, but I actually really enjoyed it. So mm. year eight history and looking at um, the different topics in there, and it was really creative. So I like to be really creative mm. around the classroom. So it gave me an opportunity to do that. Yeah. And that kind of reminds me of the story where when Mr. Young used to be my student teacher and I just chucked <laughs> in the deep end. But the same yeah. thing happened to me, honestly, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, when I first started here as well, I remember Miss Strickland came up to me and was like, uh, Mr. L, just wondering, can you teach like year 12 Digitech? And I'm like, no, I don't know any coding <laughs> at all. So I had to learn from scratch, but I didn't teach you 12 Digitech. I was like, you know what? Let's start with year seven. I'll give you year seven a try. And and then Mr. Young, you came in as my student teacher around that yeah. time, didn't you? And, uh, so I think that was three years ago now. It was yeah, three years three, ago. Four years ago, yeah. yeah. So three years ago, I came in as a student teacher and I was supposed to just observe some classes of yours and yeah. um, just take the science classes and then what do you know? One day, just get a random, you're doing year 10 Digitech. Well, I don't sure. remember the conversation <laughs> going like that. I remember a little bit more. I, I eased into a bit. I was like, hey, Mr. Young, would you like to teach? It would be good for you on your resume. He's like, yes. Yeah. Mr. yes. Mr. Young, would you like to because you are? Yes. yes. A bit like yeah. that? Yes, yeah. something like that. But, you know, I mean, you know, with yourself um, always taking yourself out of your comfort zone, mm. you know, now you've been teaching food tech as well, which yeah. has been great. Mm. And it's been pretty fun. Yeah, I've been speaking to Miss Lewis, our mm -hmm. food tech teacher, and she talks about how the kids just love your recipes. So, especially your baking ones. So, what are your yeah. key baking recipes that you would recommend? Oh, okay. Um, it's easy for the kids to learn. Easy for the kids to learn. Definitely the brown butter chock chip cookies. Mm -hmm. They're really easy to make. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's tricky is probably making brown butter. Which mm. is just caramelizing butter, but okay. you can just burn it by accident. Yeah. Oh yeah, just gotta get it just yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, just, mm -hmm. right. just right. Yeah. And then um, the other one, which was a crowd favorite, the red velvet crinkle cookies. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I like to do a bit of cooking myself. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's probably the one thing I love doing outside of school. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, not so much baking though for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm more free form. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a bit more the savory side of things mm. so my yeah. latest purchase was a um a spit roaster oh wow just a small one there's an 85 dollar bunning spit if you can get oh, one yes. get one oh. spit roaster from bunnings and i cooked a um loin of pork on it recently well, i've only cooked on it once yeah loin of pork perfect crackle yeah. Delicious. Any yeah. lemon potatoes with that? Haven't done any lemony yeah, potatoes yeah. for okay. a while. Yeah, yeah, that's one of your specialties, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so, yes. I'm the same. I'm not so. I don't like the baking so much because it's very precise. It's like yes. chemistry Whereas, teaching. Oh yeah. 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 Whereas mm. cooking food is, yeah, try a little bit of everything, and yeah. it always tastes nice. Mm. So let's pretend. Um, and of course, this isn't allowed to actually happen to the college 
where a food tech teacher who's leaving an extra class, they're not allowed to be like, hey, teach them how to cook. But let's pretend both of you, and I'll give my answer as well, um, both of you rocked up to a class where the food tech teacher was away and they're like, you know what? I'm sorry, I just had to drop everything. You yep. just have to teach him to cook anything. Okay. What would I cook? What would you cook? And then ask you next, uh, Mrs. Okay. I, I'd have two recipes that I would do. One of them is baking. Okay. Um, my award-winning pavlova. I did win Ooh. a competition with it once. Oh, so I was, we should hear more about this. Yeah, yeah. I, would go, I would go the pavlova or um, gnocchi. Ooh, yeah. gnocchi. Yeah, just with mm. a simple tomato sauce. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mine would probably be oven baking. I really love uh, cooking food, cooking food in the oven. So mm. putting things all together and putting it in because 100%. you put it in, you can walk away and do a whole oh, bunch of other jobs I and then agree. come back and have yeah. this beautiful roast with potatoes and vegetables yeah. and different things in there. So I agree. Yep. So yeah. I'd go for more something like that. Yeah. I think mine would be a baked recipe as well. Yep. It's just the same idea of me not having to control the flame and yep. like yep. having to come back to it, check on it. But um, the recipe that I is my go-to emergency recipe it's like a it's like a chicken thigh that mm. you put basil paste inside it and mm. you put some tomatoes and you make like a white wine sauce that you just put on top mm. of it and you just chuck it in the oven it yep. comes out and it's like really nice so that's my go-to recipe because i'm not much of a cook at all <laughs> i can't so hopefully i never fall into <laughs> that situation where i'm in a food tech class and there's like teach or cook so i was like Theory, sure. Well, <laughs> yeah. that is the expectation now. Yeah, exactly. So, like, of course. If you're ever covering a food tech class and it's not, you're not a food tech teacher, just mm. they'll have some theory. It'll mm. be fine. You'll yeah. be fine. Mm. <laughs> and speaking of teaching, I do remember one of the funny stories that I did have with uh, Miss Cook, and I want her to elaborate on it a bit more. And then I guess we can also talk about hypotheticals if it happened to us. But um, Miss Cook, have you ever had to teach a sibling before in your teaching career? <laughs> I can't remember. I don't even remember when I told you about that. So yeah. I did. My my first three years of teaching, I taught overseas. So I taught in New yep. Zealand. Mm. Um, I went from uni here in Melbourne. Yep. Uh, and there was a teacher shortage in New Zealand. So I went over there and mm. taught there for three years. And when I came back, I started a job out in the northern suburbs area. And it was okay. Yep. But I got a call from my old high school. <laughs> Yeah. where I had been and it was yeah. 10 years had passed yeah. and they said to me oh you know is there any chance you're looking for a job we need a maths teacher halfway through the year and there was year 12 um further maths yeah. was part of the allotment and I went yeah that'd be great I'd like you know because the school I was at oh, I wasn't too sure about whether yeah. I wanted to embed myself there so I accepted this job and my very first day was a Monday morning <laughs> And it was an 8 a.m. class. Yeah. And the first student that arrived was my youngest brother, Andrew. Yeah. And we'd had an ongoing joke for many years because he yeah. was a lot younger than, well, a little bit younger than me, a lot younger than me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and when he was little, it was always, oh, what if you get to be my teacher? And I said, yeah. you wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it. And, you know, what would I call you? And yeah. um, I, I said, you would call me your Lord and Master. <laughs> <laughs> so he walked up to me that day as an 18-year-old grown man by yeah. then and said, good morning, your Lord and Master. <laughs> so, and I taught him for six months, year 12 further maths. Yeah, and did he maintain calling you my Lord and Master amongst his friends as no, well? No, <laughs> no, and because there was an age gap and I'd yeah. been away for a long time, mm. most of his friends, like his really good friends knew, but most of the kids didn't make the connection. Mm. Yeah. Uh, even though we had the same surname of and all of that, they didn't really make the connection yeah. thinking you'd have a sister that was already you know, embedded you. in teaching and, exactly. and so on. So, yeah. yeah. So he didn't, he did it. He worked really hard. Um, he was a really good student, actually. Mm. He wasn't as good at maths as me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he worked really hard at it. Mm. And, you know, he went off to, ended up in the Navy and working on oil rigs. And after many years, finished all that. And this is sort of something about those, those futures and pathways and options mm. that come yeah. to you. He didn't go to uni after high school, mm. um, went into the Navy and all of that. But some years later, he took a retrenchment package from a job yep. and went, I'm going to uni. Wow. And moved to Townsville and did three years studying geology. And now he's got a job as a geologist in Kalgoorlie. Oh, so in yeah. WA. So, yeah. Did you ever have Probably to... because yeah. I taught him further maths. Yeah, oh, could be. <laughs> Didn't ever have to do any parent-teacher interviews or anything like that in that half a year, did you? Or um, no, I don't think my reports? mother turned up. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, uh, I don't know about you, Miss Fingos, but I'm assuming most people haven't had the opportunity to teach a sibling before if you do have any siblings. Yeah, no, no, that's, <laughs> yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah, but could you imagine like uh, what the dynamic would be like? Because I have an older brother and I could only imagine if 
if I had him as my younger brother and we still had the same personalities, um, he would just be dead quiet. Like he would just be like, don't bring any attention to us. Yep. Don't let anyone know. He's extremely shy in school. Mm. So I think that's how it could have ended up because mm. as myself as a teacher, I'm pretty, um, I would say energetic as a teacher. Mm. You know, I'm always up there. Look at this, look at that, hand movements, everything. And he'd just be the quiet one sitting in the corner just taking notes. And so I think that's yeah. how it would end up. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. if, do you have any siblings yourself, Miss? I do, yeah, but when... um, no, we would never. He would never have done what I uh, taught, done a profession like mine. So yeah. he's done totally. We're totally opposite. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. People. So mm. teaching yeah. him wouldn't have been a good outcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would not have. Oh, and when he was younger, and he'd come five minutes before he had to go and do a test and ask me to teach him how to do oh something. My. I was like, no, I can't do this. Exactly. And then he'd go and cry to my mother about why I wasn't helping him out so I can get into trouble. But yes. Oh no. Yeah. No. That, so, would, that would be, yeah, that would be very yeah. hard to deal with. It's like, but I'm trying to do the right thing. He should have studied earlier. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. How about you, Mr. Jung? So, <laughs> with my sister, um, she is older than me, um, but she does not like science. So if I ever was to teach her, mm-hmm. it would be like either a very specialized unit like skincare yep. type um, <laughs> science because she is really into it. Yeah. Mm. Um, she's thought of be like being in that career line for okay. a while. Okay. Then if I do have to teach her, it would be in something like business. Mm. And in business, I am out of my element. Yeah. Mm. And so what would happen is she'll probably like act up in my class just for fun. And then we'll have a discussion with my parents right after class being like, she did this, he did that. <laughs> and then it'll be because like we have yeah. that interaction where we like to fake argue uh-huh. in front of our parents <laughs> yeah. just to kind of like, just kind of have some fun, have some yeah. banter. Mm. But then so my mom will be like, I'm done with you two. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I must admit, my brother was pretty quiet in class. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, he wasn't sort of, mm. you know, one of the boys and yeah. he was pretty quiet. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, which was good. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of, because uh, you actually gave me a really good idea when you talked about the uh, the skincare side of things, because um, Mrs. Mingos, you were mentioning about how you had developed some different electives before, right? And so I remember one of the years I was here, I had a student who um, wasn't really into science, so she didn't enjoy it, she didn't mm-hmm. see a purpose about it, but we were learning about chemistry at the time, and so. I was able to kind of cater my materials in a way that focused more on like a cosmetic chemistry mm. side of things. Making lipstick. Yeah, exactly. Making some creams yeah. and things like and that. Soaps. Testing products and things yeah. like that. So, you know, I I've had to hit up some friends that worked at Mecca, worked at Priceline. Like, hey, you know, what exactly is it someone that, like, what do they need to know in the cosmetic side of things if they were to like learn like chemistry? So, you know, they gave me some good advice and I developed like a mini unit around that for her. Um, do either of you have, like, do any of you have a special elective that you wish that you could buy? You know what? There's no limitations. I would just go teach that one. Or maybe it could have been one that you've already developed and taught before, you know, an elective that could be, you know, different that's a that's not really seen that often Mm -hmm. so i would say that mine's the cosmetic chemistry one Mm -hmm. uh who would like to go first yeah my one's more because it's an interest with the biotechnology sort of thing which a lot of the schools have Mm. but sort of um linking it not only to what we can do with manipulating organisms but creating yogurts and different types of foods Ah, that would go in in relation Mm. to it so taking that angle in Mm. in stuff and getting kids interested in that as a booming science as a new area that they might want to sort of pursue as a course so biology and genetics don't need to be the way they were traditionally Mm. but are now very very different sort of sparking that interest in new areas that would be Mm. ongoing with science i'd love to do an immunology thing right now Ah, after what's been mm, happening at the moment so definitely yeah Mm -hmm. and i like how you mentioned yogurt because our viewers and listeners love to eat always in class (laughs) and tell them stop eating in class eat outside but they love to eat yeah (laughs) Um, Ms. Cook, how about you? Any elective? I I was always, the area of science that I loved most was that molecular biology Mm. and that molecular level. So it'd be something in that space. But um, I also, I loved teaching maths, Mm. probably even more than I loved teaching science because Mm. there's just a beauty in maths. Um, Mm. Do either of you taught any maths? I have taught maths before in my first two years. I just think there's nothing more magnificent than a board full of 
yep. like mathematical thinking. Yep. And just makes sense and yeah. it's very logical and pens. Absolutely. Like yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. challenging and, you know, doing proofs and all that sort of stuff. So that specialist maths yep. and um, that I did when I was at school. So, you know, something that combined those two things. Um, mm. It's a very yeah, nice I could thing. make a segue to the Big Bang Theory, but maybe I'll talk about that later. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the sort of stuff that I was really into. Yeah. Yeah, mm. through uni and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Mm. For mine, call me monotonous, but it'll probably be like a gym science type of thing. Yeah, I remember that. I yeah, remember you so I, that. I suggested it one time, and I thought it would have been a pretty cool club um, where it's kind of like working through because I was a physiology major, yep. mm. and so I was thought, thinking about like working through all of the studies regarding like exercise science mm. and then um, the just hormonal and um, chemical pathways mm. that. All, like work throughout our bodies mm. as we work out and mm. we grow and just exploring that through research papers and then mm. studying some of those aspects so I thought oh, would mm. it would be mm. it'd be a pretty fun thing to do we had a sports science elective at my last school <gasps> that was in the science faculty yeah oh, nice. yeah so and often the PE faculty had um, something that was yeah. more theory based physical education learning about the body but we had a sports science that yeah. was probably not as um, in depth as that, but mm. could certainly have lent itself to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was really almost popular. like nutrition with it as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And the cooking, you can mm. blend. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And it seems like a lot of our students don't really understand there's a connection between sports and science yeah. that mm. yeah. exists. Until they do VCEPE. That's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then by then it's a little bit too late because they're like, oh my yeah. goodness, what did I sign up for? <laughs> yeah. You're already here. And <laughs> I think I think one area of science that's really piqued the interest of young people to do more science is, any guesses? No, <laughs> no, no, unfortunately, physics? no. Uh, is it not immunology? Every single kid wants to be a psychologist. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, true. And true. I think psychology is a really, you know, it's a subject that didn't exist when I was at high yeah. school. Mm. Um, probably did for you guys. You're a bit younger than me. Um, just, but yeah. Oh, I think it's more than just. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. You know, as an adolescent, I would have wanted to do psychology. Mm, yeah. So, and I think it's it's brought a lot more young people into that sphere, and then it engages them in some maths as well because mm. yeah, fair bit of stats in there. Yeah, yeah, mm. and for sure because looking at twenty twenty two, and we'll start linking into that in a bit. But you know, twenty twenty two, like out of all the VC science classes, psychology has the most next year. There's five mm. classes across year eleven and twelve, and the rest have around four, yeah. other than physics, I think, which is. Uh, potentially mm -hmm. two or three i forgot which one but yeah but luckily biology is still going strong yep. chemistry is still going quite strong and yeah psychology is going very strong yeah so, and yeah. then you've got that subject in the middle of health which mm -hmm. um you know bridges a bit of both doesn't yeah. it sort of brings in a fair bit of science as well exactly as basis, so. Mm. so we'll say science is really popular oh yeah if you include health and pe yeah, and yeah. because they all have a scientific component to their theory mm -hmm. even psychology yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. so that leads me to talk a little bit more about i guess next year as well and maybe a little bit of a reflection of this year um you know with this year COVID still having been quite strong and prominent in our mm. schooling uh, but now with the easing restrictions um, and people coming back to the norm, you know, I think it's a good time to, for us to, you know, have a think back and reflect on the successes of mm. 2021 and also maybe talk about a little bit, you know, with going to 2022, are there any other things that you're looking forward to at the school community potentially mm. and maybe what we're seeing, hopefully to see in the kids or in programs and stuff like that. So maybe I'll start with you first, Mr. Young, and we'll go around the table. Okay, yeah. okay. So I guess something I'm proud of our kids for this mm. year is definitely how they've come, like, so unfortunately we've been in many lockdowns this year. Mm. What I'm proud of is how our students have come back out of lockdown and back into schools. Mm. So I don't know about you, but I imagine mm. that um, the transition from being in lockdown to back in school to be a lot rougher than it was mm. this year, mm. um, than it actually was. And yeah, I think that just is a credit to the students' maturity mm. as they come back mm. and their acceptance and their just general work ethic and their yeah. um, care to their own mental health. And yeah, so that's something I'm really proud of our students mm. for. Mm. In terms of what I want for next year mm. as STEM leader, um, I kind of want more outreach programs, like yeah. just to like have more of a, not just like, let's go on this excursion, let's go on this excursion, but more of like, let's figure out what the area around Casey 
mm. would benefit from, and then try to like do some targeted um, project based or problem based learning, mm. and yeah, mm. just have some have some fun around the local mm. area, get us on the map a bit. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. Mm. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. How about you, Miss School? Look, I know, I think back to midway through the year, which is when I came yeah. across to Cranbourne East Secondary College, and I found out at the very end of term two that I was leaving my school that I'd been principal of for nearly five years. Mm. And I had two days to say goodbye. Wow. Um, because the timelines were that tight. And, mm. you know, I just never anticipated coming and then going into lockdown. It just yes. didn't cross my mind yeah. that that was going to happen. Mm. And... I got here, it was during my first week, and I had a principal team meeting on the Thursday, and yeah. that afternoon I had to call it, yep, that we weren't that. coming back Friday. And I remember saying to them, tell me a bit about, and this was before we knew anything, tell me mm. a little bit about how you've managed your lockdowns in the past, how you've yeah. transitioned to remote learning. And I got the story and all of that, and mm. then I got the information that I had to close down. I'm like, I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah, um, because what struck me was how ready the school was mm -hmm. to be able to do it, that they'd trialled some things in the previous sort of 12 plus months and had a bit of a system in place ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I remember we brought all staff together that afternoon for yes, PLT, the green building. Yeah. professional yes, learning. Mm -hmm. And then I had to say to them, but take your stuff home because I think. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't called until a little bit oh, later. I think was, a lot later at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and to go into that lockdown, knowing nobody still, really. Yeah. Um, because my first four days had been so highly scheduled around meeting certain people that I hadn't, mm. I barely left this office. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a really strange feeling. But then we came back and then it happened again. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that last lockdown that we've just been through, hopefully it was the last one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that was the toughest on a lot of people, mm -hmm. on our kids, on our staff, um, just on the community in general. And I agree. I think I think we've come back well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the kids really wanted to reconnect, and we know we're still struggling to pull everyone back in. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I was just really proud of the efforts that our staff went to to maintain a focus on learning mm -hmm. um, throughout that whole time, and incredibly impressed by our year 11s and 12s, yeah, both VCE nice. and VCAL and their commitment mm. to being online every day with their teachers, their attendance didn't wane mm. through that. Yeah. And I thought that was incredibly impressive and mm. a, a amazing reflection of the culture mm. um, that exists. And then as we've come back, you know, I'd heard we had, you know, this great cohort at year nine and, but there's been other, like yeah. our year eights have been amazing as they've come back. Mm. Like, you know, I hope next year we can do more to support our year sevens of 2021 mm. to become fully integrated into our school because I don't yeah. think, I think it's been rough on them. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the fact that year 11s next year won't have done a full year at school since year eight. Exactly. Mm. It's um, crazy. Which is just that. mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're planning for a whole lot of supports for our VCE kids next year. So mm. the tutor learning initiative has been great support this year, but we're investing more of that into VCE next year yeah. mm -hmm. um, to boring. bridge some of those gaps and help those kids, you know, feel really supported and um, comforted. And I think as I look forward into the next year, you know, I'm really hopeful that we're over the worst. Yeah. You know? well, there'll be little interruptions, I mm. imagine, but um, I can't wait to see kids get on a bus and go to Central again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They would love uh, you that. know, I came here and had to cancel it. <laughs> um, and then I had Miss Corny saying, can we go next year? Can we? And I said, no, no, not yet, not yet, not, yet, not, yet, no, <laughs> not willing. And just last week I was able to say, yep, go for it. Yep, get it I think we're back and ready to go. And, mm. you know, I, I don't want to be cancelling things next year. I want to see them um, actually happen. Dead yeah. balls and year eight camps and year nine camps and city experience. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Production, all of those things. Yes. I just can't wait to see the community in action. Exactly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's got such a good feel even when not fully in action. Mm, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, mm -hmm. really looking forward to next year. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that will be exciting to see it yeah. all in that place too because, uh, you know, like I might be at a different school but we've noticed the same thing. It's just been lovely going back into a classroom and connecting mm. with children and sort of that relationship. I I think all the teachers feel happier, the children feel yeah. happier. It's mm. just been wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. yes, their motivation waned a little bit, but yeah. they've been able to show that resilience that they have mm. to get back on track and start doing what they need to be doing and mm. reconnect back with teachers. And so it's been a lot more positive than what I imagined it to be. So that's mm. been great. Just mm. sitting yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm not too sure if you had much of a tour around our school yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no. But yeah. Um, but 
Uh, of course, coming to our scores, wondering if there was any like special goals or anything that you wanted to look forward to next year in 2022. And it's a bit hard with a bit of context yet. Well, my, but, my know, thing has yeah. always been about getting to know students. So, uh, mm. you know, wandering around and getting to meet some students and getting to meet the teachers and, yeah. and sort of feeling part of a community, the developing those relationships with people. And that will be the primary thing. You can build buildings, but it's the mm. connections that you need to have mm. to um, a place to feel like you belong. So in the same way as children need to belong, I, I think all the teachers mm. and the staff need to belong in that way too. So mm. like I said, I'll be looking for all the science people because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yellow. We, that's where yellow. we will start yeah. first. Yeah. And, and, orange. So. and orange. Yep. Well, well, natural well, affinity for the, yeah. Yeah. Yellow, for the yeah. yellow people. I was going to say yes. the science people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're saying they're yeah. in yellow buildings. Yeah, yellow buildings. <laughs> people but don't worry of course yeah. we're spread across the school yeah. you'll get visited in the orange building as well <laughs> yeah. don't worry but the science labs are down there well you've got yeah. food i'll be there mm. oh more. yeah red red as well red building <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly exactly yeah. so that comes now time to our uh watch list segment of our little show um this is where we all just talk about maybe a recommendation and of course with this episode going out into the school holidays uh, just wondering uh, if everyone had the show that they would like to recommend to our viewers and listeners. Um, and I can start first. Um, and so the show that I would like to recommend uh, is an anime show, but it's just had a live action adaptation. So for those of you who like to watch anime, um, it is on Netflix. And the show is called Cowboy Beepop. So B-E-P-O-P. -P. And it was an old anime from probably the 1980s. And then now they've remade it with live action cast. And it's pretty much about like a bounty hunter, like a cowboy, but it's set in space. So it's like a space cowboy type of uh, TV show. So that's what I would like to recommend for the viewers and listeners. And we'll go around the circle again. Uh, so sure. how about you, Mr. Neil? Okay, so I realize that we do talk a lot about anime mm -hmm. in our recommendations. A lot of viewers do like to watch anime. They yep. do, but then for the people who don't watch anime, mm. this uh, recommendation is for if you want to get into anime, but don't know where to start. And so, of course, with all shows, just make sure you check the age rating, just so you can make an informed decision along mm. with your um, guard parents or guardians. Um, this one is for Metal Alchemist. Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Not the, there's two different types. One is the, um, I believe the original, yep. and then Brotherhood, which follows the actual author's storyline. I mm. believe that was how it's set up, mm. and follows two brothers who have, um, who are able to use alchemy mm -hmm. to solve problems, and they have this this goal of bringing back their own limbs because they accidentally committed a certain taboo, and that made them lose their limbs mm. or for one brother and the other brother their whole body so they're trying to find a way to restore everything just to go back to normal and yeah that's their whole adventure it's a really big series and it's a really worth a watch mm. Mm. probably around 60 episodes i think yeah, so yeah. Something around 20 minutes each so yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. I'm all about the binge watching, mm. um, be it old or new. So Netflix, Stan, those sorts of places is where I get to watch things. But I, I'm really enjoying at the moment watching the whole series of the Big Bang, Big Bang Theory yep. again, um, and recently redid Seinfeld because I'd never oh. seen it. I'd, I wasn't confident I'd seen every single episode, yep. and I have now. Mm -hmm. There was one I skipped that I'd seen a lot on telly yep. that mm -hmm. I, that was a bit annoying, but. Yep. Another oldie but a goodie is Parks and Recreation. Uh, that's, that's, a, yes. that's a bit of a classic. So mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that I would recommend for some light entertainment, something yeah. easy at the end of the day yeah. to just um, watch something, have a laugh, and then fall to sleep. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the movie that I'm going to think is Red Notice, also really light and easy to, do, to watch at the end of the day. Um, some really good acting, um, a bit of adventure, and a great twist at the end. So, yeah. really fantastic um, program movie to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's on Netflix as well. Yep. And uh, I heard that people who are Ryan Reynolds uh, fans must watch it. Yes. And people who are the Rock fans, Dwayne Johnson fans, also must watch it. Yep. And if you like Gal Gadot, you also must watch it. So, yeah. I think a lot of people will be watching that mm. show. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, listeners and viewers, thank you so much once again for staying with us uh, through this podcast. 
So once again, uh, like I said earlier, if you are at school next year and you go around the yard and you do see uh, Ms. Cook, Mrs. Nikos, do make sure you do say hi. And you can maybe even bring up some of the things that was mentioned in this podcast as well. Get to know them and they would love to get to know you as well. And so with this also being the episode to wrap up the year of 2021 of the podcast, um, I guess we can all say a final farewell as well. Yeah. Um, anything particular you want to say, Miss Cook, to oh, our listeners? Yeah, that'd be great. I just want to say thank mm. you for a great half a year, mm. um, most of which was disrupted, but we had some great events as we led into the end as well with mm. our being able to run our valedictory dinner. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a bit of a, a key milestone to be able to put that back on. Mm. Um, and just thank you for the welcome to the school and the community. And I'm really, just really looking forward to seeing the full community in action next year um, and what we can achieve over the coming years together as well. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll just do our usual wrap up, Mr. Yule. Yep. So, uh, listeners, thank you very much. We hope that you stay happy and healthy. All right. We'll see you all around the school, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Bye. See ya. <laughs>